Mother Nature did not play nice on Friday night at the Lebanon Valley Speedway. The muck and the mud on the front stretch did not yield to the high horsepower and made this summer grind into a trudging chore. With the weather holding off for the remainder, West Lebanon is in for a night of no holds barred action from the Never Lift Elite. and the Megas are back for day two of action here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway in West Lebanon, New York. And you can see it is packed. And you may notice something else. If you saw our coverage from last night, the track, the skies, they're dry and the sun is shining on early evening pit party action. If you didn't see our coverage from last night, you missed an absolute slop fest as a torrential rainstorm swept into the valley and drenched the track. The final round of Monsters and Megas came down to a championship race between Preston Perez, the Monster Truck winner in Toxic, and Gary Sabella, the Mega Truck winner in old number six. And that championship would go to a very, very dominant Gary Sabella in the old number six. Will is part of the uh, Anderson family's lineage there. Then your freestyle winner. Local hero Joe Foley from just over the state line in Leicester, Massachusetts drove the truck so hard he found dry ground underneath of the goo on top of this hard packed clay oval. The track crew, as you can see though, here today did a masterful job working this clay to get it back into a raceable surface. No sleep for the guys and gals that handle the never lift Monster Truck Tour, Ryan Hogan Camp, Lindsey Hogan Camp, Howard Commander, the track owner, of course, Hans Herzog, Daniel Barnes, Kevin Willicky, Chris Warnick, Matt Looker, Chris Rundell, and the rest of the crew here this weekend putting in all the effort they could overnight to get this race surface ready for an awesome evening of action here on Saturday night. Do not go anywhere. The Monsters and Megas hit the track when we come back to the Lebanon Valley Speedway. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. Stay up to date with photos, videos, event info, and more at MonstersMonthly.com. And by RPM Army, the place to get your motorsports fix. Neverlift Motorsports brings Monsters and Megas to the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, June 22nd and 23rd. See six of the biggest monsters on the planet battle six of the toughest megas in the country. Featuring the return of hometown hero Dan Cheech, Agosh, and Raminator. Tickets available at ppms.com. Monsters and Megas presented by Neverlift Motorsports. June 22nd and 23rd. Brought to you by Camping World, Northeast Custom Flatbeds, and Dungeon Designs. The world famous C60 Cyclops. The infamous Dodge Carryall, unnamed and untamed. Get yourself a one-of-a-kind toy of a mud bogger turned monster truck at freedomracingmt.com. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by RPM Army, the place to get your motorsports fix. Welcome back to a beautiful evening here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway as the sun sets over the Taconic Parkway. As I always say, we are ready to go with Monsters and Megas 2023 night number two and we get qualifying in tonight. We didn't have it last night because of a nearly two hour show delay. Now, these Monsters are gonna go single lane time trials and that will seed them into the first round bracket as we take a look at our first machine up. It'll be Triton Robbins out of Lawton's New York in the crazy train coming off a championship victory from first quarter. You like to carry that momentum on for the rest of the season. You see the light flashing to the left of the screen. It goes green, right is away. He will set the pace with a strong, strong showing there. We will wait for the time. It will be a 578 for Triton Robbins out of Watkins, New York in the Eddie Micah built crazy train. 
in-house power plant now and up next, Jim Kohler. Mr. Excitement out of Columbus, Michigan in the Corey Rummel built Avenger. Giving him the same struggles it does for everybody every year. The camber of this track is usually the telltale, but we did see a major win for Preston Perez last night in the rain out of that top lane over that man, Jim Kohler and Avenger. He ran a 675, that little turn at the top end. Probably is what did him in there. Up next, the teammate to Crazy Train, Montana Robbins, out of Lawton's New York in plain crazy. Another Eddie Micah built machine waiting on that flashing red light to go green. A lot of air in that first jump. That little roller really kicked him up as uh, they had to backtrack this entire track to get it dried out from last night. A 7.54, not what he was looking for, but he may want to roll the, the roller off the starting line as uh, our next machine comes out. It'll be Preston Perez in Toxic out of Frederick, Maryland by way of Spokane, Washington. Perez making a strong run, but still the top lane. Not an easy one to get through as uh, they still chase that 578 laid down by Crazy Train. The first one out, still holding the top spot to a uh, 681 there for Perez. And as I was saying, the uh, Never Lift Motorsports crew had to work through the night on no sleep right now to try to get this track dried out. It was so saturated as it rained hard for hours yesterday. And uh, again, delayed the pit party, canceled qualifying. We got a great show in, but here on a dry track tonight, we should have some high speeds and some big hang time, which uh, should yield to some awesome side-by-side -side racing once these guys get the track down pat. will match Dryden Robbins, Brian Wright out of Grandy, North Carolina, and the awesome Stone Crusher out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, going after the top two. Pushing it hard, let's see what he got. See if he got under the six second marker. He did indeed a 599 for Brian Wright in Stone Crusher. He rolls back to the pits. That will put him in third, respectively, behind Joe Foley and Axe. Uh, you may be wondering why if Foley matched the number one qualifying time, he's sitting in second. That is because he set it second after Triton Robbins had already set the time, so Triton gets the position out of the qualifying ladder as we see these guys in for round one. Here comes Corey Snyder in the Illuminator. The T2 chassis built by the uh, Metal Shop, the Signature Series machine with that 557 cubic inch Oldsmobile power plant in the back of uh, Kevin Stauffer out of Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, building some awesome horsepower for these guys. These two massive power plants and these two Warp Motorsports machines definitely carrying them to victory yesterday. We'll see if they can do it again here tonight. I know Snyder would love to take advantage of that bottom side. Came across the track on the run, and that will definitely slow him down. We'll see. The time ends up being a 6.50. 6.5 seconds. Elapsed time for the qualifying run of the Illuminator. Coming up next, the man out of Detroit, Michigan. Driving the Chevy out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. This is the legendary Frank Gremmel in book. Truck wiggling around on him in the lane on the top side. That will net him a 7.15. So he will be in the number seven position behind playing crazy. The two blue Silverados will be at the bottom 
of the qualifying ladder here as he rolls off the track and heads for the pit area. We are going to take a look at our qualifying ladder. They see Crazy Train and Axe in first and second positions. Then it's Stone Crusher leading the Illuminator. Stone Crusher, the only other vehicle under six seconds. And then a 650, a 675, and a 681 down to a seventh place where these guys got up in the seven second margin. Stay with us, more to come from Lebanon Valley. windows but this place is absolutely filled with fans of the monster trucks and the mega trucks there's even a little tough truck action going on tonight you can check that out in raw form on our channel a little bit later we'll have that posted up for you there and uh, pay a little tribute to some of the best tough truck racing on the east coast now we go with the mega bracket to get underway here will be a uh, diesel and a gas powered machine there you see on the top side of the track dirty looks the white truck of raleigh klein out of jacksonville vermont taking on matt fenwick out of pittsfield massachusetts in the gladiator if you saw the first year these guys were here you will know matt fenwick very well as he left this truck in pieces on this track That big white diesel-powered Chevrolet got out of the hole quick. Raleigh Klein putting a gate job on Matt Fenwick as he drives on into the next round with a victory. The Vermont Chevrolet will move on here. You see Sarge now. Nick Racine out of Asbury, Massachusetts going up against Strictly Business. Another diesel-powered machine, Kyle Rainey out of Wallingford, Connecticut. See what these guys... Uh, after each other here, well, wow. interesting start for both the scene with problems out of the hole. Strictly business, there goes the grill. You can see runs over it. Pieces coming off of that thing. Something just flew across the track there. Something came off of that track. Looks like a headlight maybe when he came across the uh, finish line. But it will be Kyle Rainey going into the next round. Rather underwhelming pairing there but this should be a good matchup Dave Rayner in just showing off he's been here every year up against the original Monsters and Megas overall champion two straight wins year number one for Tim Manny and Dirty Dirty Rayner getting a good jump but Manny out, out to the end of the top lane he comes across heads up driving for both of those guys what a race between Two of the originals from here at the Monsters and Megas Championship. And uh, look at the run that Manny got in, but Rayner made him work for it. That big blue Ford chasing the blue and white square body now. Crowd favorite here, Dirty Jersey. That's Bobby Sage out of Haynesport, New Jersey, up against old number six, Gary Sabella, last night's overall champion as they wait on green. The advantage has to go to the Richard Midget Power Machine on the bottom side. Get a little wild there at the end with Gary Sabella. Sage not looking too bad as he uh, drives uh, one of the most beat up trucks on the premises here. It's uh, a machine we did not see yesterday rolls into stage. Being blown budget, Dan Dubois out of Columbia, Connecticut, going up against Weston Anderson in the now legendary King Sling Megatruck out of Hill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Fiberglass coming off of King Sling Dubois to take evasive action. 
attention as uh, he and Weston both went to the middle. They're watching again. They were both all over the track. Anderson really all over the track. Duat not actually that far out of his lane as I thought on that side view, but Anderson crossed way up when he comes across the finish line as uh, he heads back to the pits to get ready and uh, bring uh, the Megas back to the line now for another round of racing. You see our two diesels coming in on uh, the far end of the track down there near turn number four. Will be uh, Raleigh Klein on the top side, Kyle Rainey on the bottom side. Raleigh Klein been the faster of the diesel trucks here this weekend in uh, Dirty Looks. And we always have some great diesel trucks in action. He showed up here for the first time last year and really showed him something. We'll see if he can kind of continue that tradition. And uh, man, it would be something to see a diesel truck win this whole event. Not coming off the line as hard as he did in uh, round one, but getting the job done. Rolling Cole all the way down the front stretch, and the fans here had to love that pairing. Klein will move on into the next round as we get our next pair to come up. There you see Gary Sabella going into stage. He's going to match up with Tim Manny and Dirty 30. So a pair of champs coming out to face each other right here. The defending champ from last night, Sabella, going up against the original champ, Tim Manny, Dirty 30, the Southeast and the Northeast going toe to toe right here in round two. Manny giving him a run, Sabella blows the left rear tire on the landing. Tim Manny gave him all he wanted. Watch him again, Manny and Sabella about even out of the hole. And when they came across the finish line, both of them getting a little sideways, but Sabella been kicking the rear end around all weekend long. It finally caught up with him, and he uh, pops that tractor tire off of the uh, wheel. Not a lot of surface area there. We'll see how badly it's actually popped. This is what took Weston Anderson out of competition last night, so he did not get a chance to race Sabella. If you remember last year, those two put on a clinic in the final round. Speaking of Weston, he's on the line right now. You saw his father, legendary Dennis Anderson, the icon walking around. A little bit stressed here tonight as he's got two trucks in the field. Dave Rayner on the top side going up against Anderson here in this round. Anderson not quite as aggressive as he has been in previous rounds, and I'm not quite sure if he did damage on the run earlier. As you saw him get all over the track, he may be saving it. Knew once he got a leg out on Rainer, he'd be able to hold it. Nothing against Dave, because Dave's been giving him a run here tonight. But he'll be back when these mega trucks go freestyling. Weston, on the other hand, will be going to the next round. As uh, we take a quick break, we're going to re-rack them. We're going to bring our monster trucks back for round one of their racing brackets. Stay with us. More to come from here in Lebanon Valley. For our monster truck bracket, here in round one, he will take on Frank Krimmel in hook. So your number one and your number seven qualifier will go at it here in round one. Hooked, waiting for uh, Robinson to back pass. We can see a lot of uh, traffic down here coming in and out of these hot pits. And uh, kudos to the 
Lebanon Valley Speedway and the Never Lift crew for keeping that area clear, keeping it safe, keeping the uh, crews back uh, with everything that's coming in and out of that gated area. It can get very dangerous. So again, kudos to that crew for keeping that area clear uh, in spite of being very busy here tonight as we get ready to go with our first round of monster truck racing. Again, Triton Robbins in the crazy train. He has been quick here before, has the bottom lane against the legendary Frank Grimmel in hooked. They wait on green, the blare of the train horn, and the fans are ready. What a race in the first round. Kremel got him a little bit off the start, but uh, Triton Robbins was able to drive around him coming through the second no man's land. And the victory will go to the big red machine out of Lawton's New York. Chattanooga Choo Choo headed on back to the pits with a victory. He'll move on into the semifinals to take on the winner of our next matchup, and it will be his brother in Plain Crazy, who was uh, your number eight qualifier, taking on the Illuminator and uh, Corey Snyder out of uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Now out of Frederick, Maryland, the team still uh, making its home in the uh, MoCo area, Montgomery County. Be a Ford and Chevy matchup, a pair of big blue machines on the line right now. Illuminator out of the old line state, plain crazy, the home state hero in this round, the Empire Flyer. Two second generation drivers, each trying to knock the other one down as they wait on green. Coming together there at the end. You can see it's taking some heads up driving to get through this one. The win will go to the Illuminator. We waited for a second there to see if there was a penalty on the run. They both jumped to the middle. But a uh, legal run out of both lanes as uh, both of those trucks looking nice and shiny tonight, which uh, took a lot of cleaning. I mentioned how hard the track crew and the uh, Never lifts crew work to get this facility dried out and ready for racing today. These monster truck crews worked all night power washing and all morning power washing these vehicles to make them nice and bright and shiny for the crowd here today. Now as teammates go at it, the boss and uh, kind of the protege here, Jim Kohler in Avenger, Corey Rumble built machine against the truck. Jim himself built that being Axe. Schooled him on the starting line. I think Foley may have been sleeping a bit there. Thought he'd have given uh, the boss man more of a run, but Foley will go back to the pits and have to wait on freestyle. Kohler moves into the semi-final round. He will either take on Preston Perez in Toxic or Brian Wright in the Stone Crusher. Virginia Beach, Virginia based Ford on the bottom lane, a pair of PEI machines going at it here in round one. Perez, last night's winner out of that top lane, but that was in the muck. No gimmies here, Brian Wright is in trouble. Had to hang on to it. I'll tell you what, man, they are Certainly uh, taking advantage of conditions here today. There is a lot of bite on this track, so watch it again. Keep your eye on Brian Wright in this run as he comes around. Look at him come all the way over to the left-hand side, got into that freestyle obstacle, wisely pedals it. He managed to keep it off of the obstacle, but then he had to contend with the uh, truck getting up on the side. Not too bad, though. As he hangs in there, they see Preston Perez headed back to the pits. We'll bring the mega trucks back out for another round of racing here. Gary Sabelli, you see the black rim on the back of that machine. They had to replace that whole thing. They did not have another tire 
they could just throw on the rim and apparently that tire that was on there could not be blown back up so Sabella with a spare on right now going up against Raleigh Klein in dirty look so old number six the favorite in this pairing but how is the truck doing after that hard hit in the previous round Bella pops a tire again and gets into the wall. Hold on to it. Gary Sabella almost went over that time as he bangs the outer wall down there near turn one. Raleigh Klein giving him a race in that pairing, but it looks like Sabella will pick up the win there. That was very close. Look at that. Klein laying in the throttle on the big diesel, and then when Sabella lands, there goes the same rear tire. That time it just blew on him. And bangs into the wall up on the side. Sabella, it worked over here tonight, wow. No rest for the wicked this time around. Look at, look at the expression on Dennis Anderson's face. He wants that truck back in competition. Should be a matchup between Sabella and Anderson. That's what it's slated to be now, as Anderson just had to make a legal run to get into the final round. Again, very, very stressful pit area here tonight, as these guys know there's a lot on the line here. When it comes down to that championship race, remember, if you haven't seen this before, the winner of the monster truck bracket takes on the winner of the mega truck bracket. Anderson knows he's got a shot at it either way because his son is driving King Sling and Gary Sabella is driving old number six, the old street digger number six. The uh, frame rail is about all that's left of that old number six, but uh, still very competitive considering the age and the amount of work that's been done to make that truck the competition piece that it is now as Corey Snyder and Triton Robbins roll out for a semi-final round of monster truck racing here under the lights at the Lebanon Valley Speedway. The age-old battle of Ford versus Locomotive continues here on the front stretch. It's kind of a rebirth of a rivalry that started during first quarter on the uh, championship series that uh, concluded with Robbins picking up a uh, season victory three months on the road with that machine. Snyder would love to get another shot at him here, but he's got that top lane. Snyder throws him on the start. And Illuminator picks up a victory, but he comes across. Hard contact at the end of the run. Both drivers getting uh, woed before the wall right there. You can see Snyder stopped at the end as the rear steering is still cocked to one side. We saw the arm go up there, checking on uh, Triton Robbins. We saw him give the thumbs up signal. It looked like when Snyder got out of control at the end, he actually slowed down and Robbins just had no way to get the truck woed in time. In fact, I think he may have had a parts failure that did not allow him to shut down. Watch this, just bang, right there. You can see Snyder way out of shape at the end of the run. I guarantee you next time he gets on that throttle and goes on up the track. But uh, looks like some rather serious damage sustained by the crazy train. Now, Snyder, when he rolled back, didn't look like too much other than body mounts and fuel tank is apparently okay, but uh, crazy train, looks to have sustained the worst of it. That was very, very hard contact between those two trucks. And the word we get was there was actually a brake failure on uh, Crazy Train that led to that incident. But uh, again, Snyder probably uh, would have made the better choice to get back in the throttle when he got out of his lane, but he learned that lesson. That will stick with him. It's always easier said than done to pilot the big, bad monster trucks.
very close at the end again, but it looks like Kohler, Jim Kohler in Avenger will pick up the win over Brian Wright in Stone Crusher. And Wright has taken some wild rides on that bottom side, man. He was in the throttle the whole way down, had his foot to the floor, and look at the wild ride. Never lifted. What a race here tonight. You can see both of them working to get into that championship round. Brian Wright and Stone Crusher. Not quite enough to knock down Mr. Excitement, but a good pair of competitors there as our Mega Truck Championship race gets underway. King Sling and Dirty Looks. The Diesel and the big blower motor, the alcohol injected. King Sling going against Raleigh Klein, Roland Cole and Dirty Looks. Here we go, the championship in the Megas. Weston Anderson taking flight at the end of that one. Heavy right foot all the way through. Watch the front end lift when he comes over the finish. Looked like an airplane taking off when he came across that last jump. Weston Anderson picking up a victory over a hard charge of Raleigh Klein, but that diesel powered machine was no match for King Sling as the fireworks go off. We're not done yet. We still have a monster truck championship to contend and our Monsters and Megas overall championship. We're gonna get things re-racked here in just a second, but as we take one more look at the run, we are going to take a quick break. And it will be Illuminator taking on Avenger for the right to meet that man right there in King Sling when we come back to the Lebanon Valley Speedway. Stay with us. Speedway ready now for our Monster Truck Championship race. And you can see they have uh, removed a couple of body panels from the Illuminator after the collision with uh, Crazy Train at the end of their semi-final pairing. He now does battle with Jim Kohler, who's in his second final round appearance of the weekend. Now in the lane that Preston Perez beat him out of last night. Again, on a sloppy track tonight on a very fast dry track. And it's been a toss-up as to which lane will give you the fastest runs. This has been a wild, wild night. And Snyder is out of it. Kohler gets wild at the end of the run. Both of them with trouble, but Kohler hangs in, makes a legal run. Snyder was DQ'd on the second hit. He missed the ramp, and that was all she rode. Kohler wisely hanging on in there. I don't think he even knew that, uh, I'm sure he didn't know that Snyder had even DQ'd, but he will pick up a victory here in the Avenger. That Warp Motorsports been a thorn in his side here this weekend. He got knocked out by Preston Perez last night, had to battle with Corey Snyder tonight, celebrating in front of some of the best fans in motorsports here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway. One more look at it, you can see right there, Snyder just flat drove off the track. And uh, there was no hope of coming back. And you have to wonder if the truck is acting up after the uh, troubles he had in the semi-final round, getting beaten and banged around. There was no way Triton Robbins was gonna be able to come back as they're back there right now trying to get the front end put back together on that truck. And that brings us here pair of big green machines matching up in the Monsters and Megas Championship Avenger and King Sling. Two legendary families in motorsports. 
the Icons. Machine down on the inside lane has to be the favorite against the big Terra Tire 57 Bel Air. They go green. Cola didn't give it to him. He raced him all the way to the last jump before he got out of shape. But Weston Anderson will pick up the victory in King Sling. Both of them whipping donuts up there on the front stretch. Here comes Anderson back down to celebrate a well-deserved victory. Not his first one at Monsters and Megas for sure. As uh, trying to make himself a fixture here year to year and uh, loves getting a chance to drive King Sling different kind of ride for him. You can see just how aggressive he really is. Again, full send mode on that run for Weston Anderson. As we're gonna go right into Mega Truck Freestyle, Kyle Rainey out of Wallingford, Connecticut now in the diesel powered Strictly Business. We are moving quick now. We got a bunch more to go. Monster Truck Freestyle still to come, but we got a few Megas that we gotta get through here as uh, Rainey will open up freestyle action. The Connecticut-based diesel-powered Chevrolet Strictly Business. Here's a much quieter running power plant, but it definitely produces a lot of low-end torque, and I think if he can get the hit just right, really, he could stand this thing up from a dead stop on one of these uh, ramps or one of these car stacks out here. If you really got into one of the more flat-sided ramps that they have in the center of the track, he could definitely do a killer wheelie with this truck. Again, just setting the pace for our Megas out here. Nice hit for him right there as he loses another headlight. Remember back to round one, he tossed one out, bounced off the wheel and went rolling down the track. Another look at the run for Kyle Rainey. Nice hit there to wrap it up. And then definitely beating and banging on that machine. You can tell he's been over with it. The big dent on the side. Here comes Dave Rayner now. Monsters and Megas regular since 2021. Just showing off. Big Blue 79 Ford. Rainer out of uh, Morris, Connecticut. Again, he's been a fixture here since the uh, first one in 2021, and just uh, no quitting this guy. Sometimes an underdog in racing, he's gotten faster and faster every time we've seen him. Incredible to watch these guys work this track with only front steering. You consider how used you are to seeing rear steering on the uh, big mountain motor machines that run around out here all weekend. And Rainer making an excellent run on this track right now. Again, just getting things warmed up as uh, the monsters are still the freestyle, but got a couple of megas. I want to show their stuff, and I guarantee you, before we get to the end of this mega freestyle, we're going to see some carnage. It's become tradition on Saturday night for stuff to start coming apart. There we go, right there. He just overextended the front sway bar, and the uh, arms flipped around the other way, so that's going to end that run. Nice hit, though, on his way to breaking the truck. As our next machine rolls out, Bobby Sage out of Haynesport, New Jersey. Dirty Jersey. He was upside down last night. He was upside down last year, and uh, might be time to put some machine metal on this truck, but he is gonna drive the wheels off of it. As you can see, got a nice shot right there. Going for a wheelie in the big Chevrolet. One of the most spectacular guys out here. Very tall truck, though. He's gotta watch how he turns it on the clay, because it'll tip over. Right there, you see him getting out of shape. Now last night he came around and tried to go up the side of the flyaway on the backflip ramp and uh, ended up upside down. I do believe though he's got a broken axle. 
saw that kind of an interesting launch it made. He's sort of driving around right now. I think he's trying to figure out what he can do. He had a plan to come out here and do something different than uh, anybody else is going to be able to do here tonight. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is because if he can pull it off, it is, uh, it's going to be maybe the spectacle of the night. Was, uh, last year he tried to backflip the truck and it, just the height kind of caught up with him as the frame dug in and he just tipped over backwards. But still giving the fans the carnage they came to see. They absolutely loved it. Sage works his way around this far side of the track. It looks like he is indeed setting up for it. Here we go. Broken axle or not, he is going to give these fans a show. Hold on, Bobby. Off the end. Didn't work. Not quite what he had in mind. I think the fan or the plan was to try to front flip the thing. At the very least, roll it all the way back over and keep going. But uh, broken axle kind of had other ideas. You can see, he just couldn't get the thing to stop with that rear axle just still rolling like that. When he locked it up, he needs those rear tires to lock up so it'll trip the truck over. It just wasn't going to happen with the rear end broken like that. But still and Saturday night on his top with a bent four link bar so Bobby Sage for the second night in a row for the second year in a row ends on his lid now Weston Anderson King Sling here's another guy that ended his weekend upside down last year didn't get a chance to freestyle in the mud last night due to a blown tire and this is one of the few mega trucks out there uh, right now with rear steering. Almost a monster truck spec machine except for the uh, rubber on the ground and the weight differential. But this thing is an absolute flyer as you've seen during our racing program. just going huge in this thing right now is looks like he's gonna work into some two-wheel action stoppy for King Sling how often do you see it in a mega truck carrying down the track a little ways let's see what he's got left again another guy who has some plans before the end of this run he tore it up last year he's already torn it up a bit tonight Got a tire going down again. The right rear is flat. Went for the back flip with a flat tire and it twisted on him. And uh, I don't think quite as much damage as he did last year, but uh, going to end the thing in pieces again. They're going to need another body for the old 41 Willis mega truck. Watch it again. Just such massive hang time. Out of King Sling, Weston Anderson, a natural behind the wheel. This guy uh, can drive just about anything you put him in. And uh, the Anderson family certainly spends their time driving their fair amount of machines. Even if it's street cars, jumping through trailers, whatever. They're going to put on a show as King Sling wraps up. Mega truck freestyle action upside down. Sparks flying. Not done yet, though, from here in Lebanon Valley. Monster Truck Freestyle is on the way when we come back. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. For the Silver Lake Sand Dragway, there really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. That wood wheels. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good on it. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Alan Pizzo. We're gonna check it out. This week, we're gonna go down memory lane.
Definitely not doing as much damage to the King Sling this year as they did last year, but uh, put on quite the show with the Mega Trucks. Now we go back to the Mazda Trucks, opening up freestyle with Corey Snyder in Illuminator. Out of Frederick, Maryland. Metal Shop Signature Series chassis going to work here. See how this machine handles as it uh, looks like it's whipping around kind of funny already and I have to wonder if any major damage was done in the incursion with Crazy Train. Although those two drivers are on good terms, they had a little talk in the pit area and uh, apologies were traded and everybody's good, ready to go here tonight. We'll see how the truck runs right now as he works his way through setting the pace the rest of the field here tonight in monster truck freestyle it looks like he's getting a little race from somebody out there on uh, route 20. saw the ford explorer on the other side of the fence headed back toward the parkway here comes corey snyder now back up from turn four nicely done technical moves those wheelies really have become his trademark over the years Truck is definitely handling a little bit funny right now as it looks like he's trying to feel it out, but something's not fit right on the illuminator. Oh, he's got a bigger problem. Hear him shut it down right there. You can hear the RPMs coming up. Even when he's on the brakes, you see the brake rotor light up. He had a stuck throttle right there. He wisely shuts that thing down. Hopefully not doing any engine damage. It's always tough to cut power when the machine's under throttle. You can absolutely blow one of these motors apart. And doesn't look like he did any of that, but uh, definitely problems there for Snyder as he gets pushed on back into the pit area. Tough break for him as they've had a rough end to a rather good weekend for this team. Two final rounds for them and uh, still got one truck left in the line. Be Preston Perez and Toxic in just a little bit. Right now, Frank Kremel, who started his freestyle last night, making hard contact with the outside wall in Hook. Let's see what the man out of Detroit has for the crowd here in New York. Vertical air in that obstacle back there. Is, uh, now kind of become the pace center. Since Snyder had to cut his run short due to that mechanical problem, now Frank Kremel will set the stage for the everyone behind him. Another guy in the business is really reaching that legendary status. He's, uh, he's had quite a storied career and uh, spent uh, spent some time with the rest of the Michigan-based Team Scream in the early days of that team, alongside Jim Kohler and then Chris Bergeron. Bremel getting his uh, early runs in behind the wheel of uh, one of uh, Jeff and uh, Jocelyn Perrin's vehicles. Looks like he's gonna head for the ambulance. First one, nicely done, and you can see the work cab on the back of that ambulance has no give to it. You can get yourself in trouble if you're not square on that thing. Nicely done for Frank Kremel in Hooked. Definitely a pace-setting run, had plenty of hang time, some great hits on these race lanes. 
Don't know that that's going to be a winning freestyle run, but definitely not a disappointing one. And then this hit right here, that is an obstacle I'm interested to see what becomes of it because that could be a home wrecker if you hit it too hard. But we'll wait and see how it comes. Preston Perez and Toxic last night's Monster Truck Racing winner and Monsters and Megas overall runner-up. First time here at this legendary facility and he picks up a very, very important racing win. One that uh, he won't soon forget as we get ready. See this, uh, this truck's definitely been through the ringer this year as he's got the half bed sides uh, courtesy of one Kevin Rico who's down in the pits. Flight risk definitely earning the money here tonight. So, Preston Perez. Is the last uh, bit of high blood pressure here for the weekend for that team. Headed for the ambulance. Hitting it hard, not bad at all. It's cracked right there. Remember, the bottom side of this track is paved, so that was a hard hit, but. Toxic soaking up everything he throws at it. One of the best pieces of equipment in the business today. EI chassis with all the bells and whistles on it. Giving the fans a show, a green light weekend for these guys and taking every bit of advantage of it. He can is missing a bedside. Cyclone time for Toxic. Missing the bedside, the opposite bedside from Illuminator. So now we got matching Wolf Motorsports trucks. Going away here at West Lab, they definitely earned their keep this week, and that was an awesome hit over that ambulance. And look how hard he came down. Still though, soaking it up, moving on. Looks like it will be the takeover run for the moment, but he has some heavy hitters coming up behind him, including this guy, Brian Wright, in Stone Crusher. Starting off with some big time momentum. Takes a seasoned driver to find the sweet spot coming out of midair like that. Brian Wright. Taking those risks in Stone Crush where they're paying off right now. Another Patrick Enterprises built machine and uh, Proving those designs still hold up to all the punishment today.
gun right here and looks like he will head back to the pit area. What a run with a big Ford out of Virginia Beach, Virginia being piloted by the man out of Grandy, North Carolina who been a, a fixture on this team for quite some time and uh, has his share of major event wins over the years. A very, very talented driver now as another very talented driver rolls out a second gen in Crazy Train and uh, they've taken the front end off of this truck but he has indeed done some uh, chassis damage up there in the front so we'll see how long this lasts. He's not going to take it easy though. I can tell you that this this could be interesting to watch right now though doing what he does best opening it up with that awesome two-wheel action the crazy train out of Watkins, New York the Eddie Micah built machine with the in-house horsepower in the belly Remember, at the conclusion of this season, this particular chassis is going to go into the shop, get a complete refresh, get a bit of a rebuild on it, and then it's going to go to Lloyd Twitchell, a former member of this team, and uh, it will become the new behind bars for 2024. We knew it was going to be an absolutely torturous weekend on these trucks, but I don't think we had any idea it was going to be like this. Robbins works the track with Crazy Train. Flying around. He's got a problem, though. Something hanging down underneath. Looks like the front end. Yeah, oh, he's got a four-link bar. The uh, rod end ripped out of him. may have uh, pulled the bung out of the end of the bar, but... Uh, that's going to cut his run short. I guarantee he had a lot left in that thing. But, said torturous weekend now as his brother rolls out in plain crazy Montana Robbins out of Lawrence, New York. Another Eddie Micah built machine. Seems like he cannot get away from the rear brakes dragging on this thing. That's not all him driving and causing that. Something keeps going away on that, that rear caliper. It keeps getting hung up, so we'll see if it causes any problems. He's got no quit in it. He'll just burn it down. Wild ride for Montana Robbins. He's going after whatever's in front of him.
And the power plant goes quiet right there. I'm not sure if they shut him down or if he shut it down, but Montana Robbins is going to wrap up another on-par run for him. He has laid down some of the uh, most consistently fast and furious freestyle runs we have seen in the 2023 season. And uh, anytime he gets a chance to go after his brother, you're going to see a very different Montana Robbins as uh, Plain Crazy continues on. And uh, we'll see what uh, the future holds for that team. They've got some great things coming up in 2024. Now, guy who's kind of a local legend around here, Joe Foley and Axe. Right across the state line, Western Massachusetts' own Joe Foley driving the Columbus, Michigan based Jim Fuller built fire truck and he combos into a stoppy. Try to get into a moonwalk. Transmission said no. He let it have what it wanted. Gonna give these fans an awesome freestyle. A lot of hang time early. So this is one of those guys, it's just so fitting that he ended up over at Jim Kohler's team because he's one of those drivers that will carry race-like speed in the middle of a technical freestyle and whatever the truck gives him, he will drive into it. This guy does not shy away from anything. The engine burp with a little bit of flame right there. He backs out of the throttle, a little raw fuel coming out of the pipes. He takes a wild ride right there. Down the brakes, I can't tell if he's just steering it that way or if he's got a broken axle. Has he got some interesting kicks? He's headed for this backflip ramp. Definitely not going to happen here tonight. The frame catches the clay. And he's got a flash fire right there. The crew's uh, running over. That fire will put itself out. Got fire bottles on scene just in case. As the uh, rescue crew's gonna go over there and check on him. He's all right, just a quick check over to make sure, but he put on a clinic. Joe Foley was kind of short and sweet for Axe, not the normal marathon freestyle we're used to. I think he was hoping it would rotate and he could just keep on going after the backflip. But it did not happen. But this, to start off his run, was just incredible. Slap wheelie into a stoppy, and then these wild, wide open hits on the front stretch. And again, I have to wonder if uh, he did have some parts going away on that thing. As uh, he uh, ends up in uh, broken fiberglass on what was a brand new body. They just put that body on the truck for this show as he tore the last one up down in Maryland at uh, another legendary speedway down there. It's a little ways up the northeast and uh, back toward home and he's going to have some more fiberglass work to do. Here's a guy who might as well his team owner, his boss, Jim Kohler, in Avenger out of Columbus, Michigan, our final freestyler on the night. As Joe Foley leads the charge in acts for the moment. The big green machine out of coal country for all it's worth right now. Very heavy piece of equipment as these guys build their trucks like tanks. Talk about a lot of the great in-house fabricators 
in this business. It's Corey Rummel chassis. They're built right there with the uh, shot from Columbus, Michigan. A hard hit on the pavement for Kohler. He's got a ton of hang time. The truck survives it, though. No quitting that guy. He is taking some hard hits. He's got to be feeling that in the cab as tight as you are in these trucks. Those abrupt hits still got to hurt just a little bit. He's got a tire going down right now. That's no surprise. The hard hit he took was on pavement, remember? He's still pushing it, though. He won't go till it won't run anymore. The rim is uh, on the ground completely now as the tire starts to roll all the way off. Actually, he's got two tires going down, though. The right rear is also going flat. I don't know if he can feel that just yet, but that thing's going to be on the ground here in just a minute. <laughs> Jim Kohler in the Avenger, doing what he does best, creating a little carnage here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway with two flat tires, and he's up there by the wall. Looks like he's going to take a parade lap on back down. I don't know if he's got anything left in this. I wouldn't be surprised if he gave him one more move as Kohler works his way around with both right side tires completely to the rim. Jim Kohler in Avenger living up to the name Mr. Excitement. I can't believe that thing's going off the track with the body still intact after a weekend like this. What a weekend of action this has been here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway. Jim Kohler taking that parade lap on back. Just wanted to say good night to his fans. And they love him on both sides of the tracks as the crews give him a salute from down here on the infield. Jim Kohler in Avenger rolling on back, but right now they have to decide a freestyle winner. And it will once again go to Joe Foley from right down the road in Leicester, Massachusetts in Axe. So back-to-back -back freestyle victories for him. Your racing winner in the Monster Truck Bracket, Jim Kohler. Congratulations to Team Scream on two wins tonight. And your overall event champion, Weston Anderson in King Sling, who won the Mega Truck Bracket and the overall event racing championship. Congratulations to all our champions this weekend. We expect to see you all back here next year at the Lebanon Valley Speedway in 2024 with the Neverlift Motorsports crew. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time.